Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Philly Beats You and welcome to the ultimate grand underground digging guide. This video is filled with information from digging items, statues, loot, lots of stuff. So if you want to skip anywhere in the video, there's going to be timestamps down below. And without further ado, let's get on into this video. Make sure to hit that like button if you do enjoy this kind of content. Let's go. The underground is broken up into six total areas. The biggest part of the Grand Underground is accessed from Eterna City, and you can see that going from all the way west to all the way east. You also have access to the southwest, which you can easily access from your hometown. The dead center of the Grand Underground can be found in Celestic Town, where Cynthia's grandma is. The northwest part of the Grand Underground you can access from Snowpoint City. This is where all the snow and icy areas are. The southeast part can be accessed from Sunny Shore City, and the final northeast part of the Grand Underground can be accessed from the post-game island where the fight area is. Let's talk about digging. Digging is pretty simple. You have a small pickaxe and you have a giant mallet. Your goal is to uncover the amount of treasure that the game states you can find at the dig site before it collapses. Every hit that you do causes the dig site to crack and get bigger and bigger, so you want to make sure to get all the loot before the whole entire area collapses on you. The small pickaxe moves the crack slowly, while the large mallet digs much more and causes a bigger crack every hit. It's basically risk to reward. There are three strategies when approaching digging. My buddy Austin John Plays came up with this cool overlay that you have to throw on OBS. If you have a capture card for your Switch, this will work out very well, and you can throw this on OBS. Whatever you do, please do not draw on your Switch or put anything on your screens or anything on your TV. I am not responsible if anything happens to your Switch. This digging method is really good because if there are any large items, fossils, or statues, it'll be seen without you missing them. This digging method does not guarantee small items though. Even without a capture card, after a lot of repetition, you should be able to have these tiles memorized. The next digging strategy is my favorite one. I call this method educational guest spamming. Literally just grab the mallet and hit the digging site in various areas to see what you'll get. This method was a lot faster than carefully hitting individual squares, but be warned, you will mess up more often with this method, even though you feel like it's going a lot faster. And sometimes it can lead to big disappointment. The third method is basically the previous two combined. You carefully hit certain digging areas on the digging site and then take your mallet out and start to bang around the rest. This one is pretty good in my opinion, as it does combine the previous two, but you always run the biggest risk when you use the mallet. Now that we covered the digging, let's talk about what you can find. The most basic items that you find are spheres. They are red, blue, green, prism, and pale. Prism and pale being the much more rarer ones and come in small sizes and large sizes. They are basically the currency of this game and can be used at vendors, which we'll talk about later in this video. Shards come in four colors, red, green, blue, and yellow. You can use them in the overworld to trade for TMs or you can go to vendors and trade them in for spheres. They look small, but are very large when digging. You can also find evolutionary stones like Firestone, Waterstone, Thunderstone, Leafstone, Moonstone, Sunstone, and Ovalstone down here. The Everstone, which basically prevents your Pokemon from evolving, but also guarantees baby Pokemon to have the same nature as the parent when breeding. You can also find a lot of cool fossils, such as the Root Fossil, which gets you Lily, Plaw Fossil, which gets you Anorin, the Helix Fossil, which gets you Ammonite, the Dome Fossil, which gets you Kabuto, the Old Amber, which gets you Aerodactyl, the Armor Fossil, which gets you Shield On, which is exclusive to Shining Pearl, and the Skull Fossil, Cranidos, which is exclusive to Brilliant Diamond. You can also find plates in the overworld, but you can find all 17 down here. They are used to change Arceus's typing and its move judgment, but Arceus is not in the game for now. So it's just good for boosting the power of certain move types by 20%. You'll also find weather rocks like the Heat Rock, Damp Rock, Smooth Rock, and Icy Rock, which basically extend weather effects in battle. Items that are considered treasure that can be sold for money are the Rare Bone and Star Piece. You can also find Light Clay, which increases the amount of time Light Screen Reflect and Aurora Veil can last. The Iron Ball, which lowers user speed, and the Hard Stone, which boosts Rock-type moves. You can find an odd Keystone down here, which is used for the Spirit Tomb event, and Hard Scales are used to relearn moves. The final big items that you will get in the Grand Underground as you progress are known as Mysterious Shards. These will be used in post-game slash end-game at Ramana's Park, 
to purchase legendary Pokemon Slates. Something to note is that three small shards are equal to one large shard. Let's talk about Pokemon statues. Statues are probably the most satisfying thing to get when digging in the game. And opening them for the first time can be very exciting, especially when you get your favorite Pokemon. Ooh, I think I got a shiny box. Okay, shiny, shiny, shiny fire, Charizard. Maybe Charizard, shiny Arcanine, Charizard, something shiny. Dude, if I get a shiny Charizard, that'd be insane. Hey, come on, open up. Oh, no way. There are about 487 unique total statues in the game. This includes shiny versions of normal statues and legendary statues that you can get from Ramana's Park. The type of statue box you find is the type of Pokemon you find. Statues come in multiple sizes, one by one, one by two, two by two, three by three, and four by four or in other words, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. A lot of statues may be locked behind getting the national decks. So unlocking the national decks would be very useful to your ground underground statue hunting adventure. Let's talk about Diglets in the Grand Underground. In the Grand Underground, you'll see a little zero out of 40 counter in the top left. Diglets count for one and Dugtrios count for three. When you get a total of 40, you'll see a rainbow color. You'll then have approximately four minutes until this boosted effect wears off. I like to call this a shiny statue rush hunt. When you start digging, you'll see an increase in shiny statues. Make sure to focus on the statues and move on and not get distracted by any other loot during this time. You want to maximize the amount of shiny statues you get. If there aren't any sparkles on the pathways that you're looking to dig, go back into a Pokemon hideaway, come back and the sparkles will be refreshed. Once this effect wears off, you have to hunt another 40 Diglets again. Remember, the progress you have leaves once you leave the underground. There was a data mine that when having 40 Diglets, it adds an extra roll to your shiny odds of finding a Pokemon in the Grand Underground. Let's talk about secret bases. Secret bases can have statues and statue pedestals inside of it. You can have 18 total statues in the room, which does not change even though you expand the room. There are three types of boosts that you get depending on the Pokemon typing of the statues you have. In this example, I have Dragon Pokemon. As you can see, the three types of boost you have can depend on the amount of statues. So this picture has slightly raises as you only see three Altaria. The next picture, I have a couple more dragons in the room. That will count as raises. And then when I add a ton of dragon Pokemon, as well as legendary dragon statues, you can see the words sharply raises for that specific type. Please note that final evolution statues are better than pre-evolution statues, and that shiny statues are better than non-shiny statues. And legendary statues have the highest boosted rates of those types. So to get sharply raises of a certain statue, you want to mostly have shiny statues and legendary Pokemon of that type. To get those Pokemon to increase in appearance in the Pokemon hideaways. To make your understanding of statues a lot easier, I have this Excel sheet. Thanks, Austin John, for making this. Basically, you're going to be looking at the Pokemon. You're going to be looking at the type it is, what it boosts, aka the effect. So it's plus 30 for grass. The type 2 is poison, and it has a plus 15 for that. So its secondary type has a smaller boost. When you have the shiny statue of Bulbasaur, it's basically plus 60 to the grass increased rate, and a plus 30 to the poison increased rate. When you evolve to an Ivysaur, basically the next evolution, which is why we say the next evolutions are always better. You have a plus 42 towards grass and a plus 21 towards poison. You can notice that the shiny Bulbasaur still outdoes the Ivysaur, but when we get to shiny Ivysaur, you can see that plus 84. Likewise, the poison doubles to 42. Our regular Venusaur does not outdo an Ivysaur, but when you have a shiny Venusaur, you literally have a plus 96 increase to grass. This applies literally to almost all of these Pokemon in the game. And to kind of give you an example of how boosted legendaries are, if you look at Articuno, Articuno has a 144 increase to ice Pokemon. Zapdos has an increase of 144 to electric and Moltres 144 to fire. Mewtwo has a 180 increase to psychic type Pokemon appearing. So if you want to really boost those psychic types, throw a Mewtwo in there, throw a lot of shiny psychic Pokemon, you get what I mean. So again, to summarize, you want to prioritize legendary Pokemon, shiny Pokemon, and final evolution Pokemon. It's better if you get a final shiny evolution, but that's the way to boost rates in order to do your Pokemon 
hunting in the Grand Underground. To expand a secret base to fit larger statues, you must talk to the hiker that is responsible for expanding your base. The secret base can be expanded twice. For the first upgrade, you're gonna need a lot of small spheres. 60 red spheres, 60 blue spheres, 60 green spheres, 30 prism spheres, and 30 pale spheres. And if you wanna upgrade to the level three, it's gonna cost you 40 large spheres of red, blue, and green, and 20 large spheres of the prism and pale spheres. If you're wondering about the Pokemon spawns in Pokemon Hideaways, we're gonna have another entire video dedicated to that. So make sure you have notifications turned on because that video is probably gonna be dropping very soon. Or if it's the future, it's already up. Let's talk about the hikers, which are basically your shops and vendors within the game. Throughout the Grand Underground, you will encounter a few hikers in different locations. On this map, you can notice that the expand your base NPCs are going to be on all the corners of the map. So you have one in your southeast, you have one in your southwest, you have one in your northwest, and you have one in your northeast. You can notice that there's going to be no base expansions within the middle. Marked in green are vendors or NPCs that'll help you rest. So usually you want to go to them right before you enter into a Pokemon hideaway. They will restore your Pokemon to full health so you can be ready to go and catch a lot of them. The yellow marks on this map all are in reference to small sphere vendors. Small sphere vendors are basically going to always have a digger drill. They're going to have a large sphere trade-in, so it's your small ones for large ones they're gonna have different pedestals every single time three pedestals and five tms the large spear hikers are going to be on the map by the blue marks and they're going to have a transfer of large spheres to small spheres five pedestals and five tms as well that are all very different by the way these change every single day do not date skip because this will halt your progress and push the end game time by 24 hours it's just something about this game that we can't date skip the only thing you can do when your date skip is change how the game looks, whether it's day or night. But besides that, it'll mess up everything. Again, warning, do not do it. Well, if you made it to this point, congratulations. You've gone through the video, and now you are an expert at digging in the Grand Underground. You know everything about the loot, how to dig, the items, the vendors. You are a professional at this point. Stay tuned for the next video, where we're going to be going over all the Pokemon hideaways and everything around that. My name is Philly Beats You. Thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy this, make sure to hit that like button. It helps the channel out a lot. Subscribe for content like this. We're trying to hit 100K. And I will see you guys in the next video. This is Philly Beats You, and I'm out. Peace.